And presenting will be Ralph Wilhelms from Lake Superior State University. And I wanted to give a little bit of background on Ralph and his work. He's a, a highly experienced senior business analyst and entrepreneur. And he's had 15 years of hands-on experience in startups. Demonstrates strong technical and business qualifications in the er areas of strategic planning, business unit development, project and product management, and system engineering strategies. In 2005, Ralph began the transitional process to academia. And currently, he is an associate professor at Lake Superior State University in the International Business Department. He has published numerous articles in national and international journals, and his research interests are in the areas of international business, strategic management, economic development, and marketing with an entre entrepreneurial spirit at heart. And that's really good to hear. That's what we need in this state and both Lower Peninsula and Upper Peninsula. My name is Jennifer Bruin, and um, we were able to work with Ralph. Uh, we were lucky to find him because we were looking for somebody that um, would work on this particular topic and definitely in the UP region. We already have some partners up there uh, currently working on another project. Um, so it's, it's really becoming kind of a lively um, area of interest in the UP. Uh, this particular program that was able to support um, Ralph and his efforts and his student team is called the EDA University Center. And it's located here at Michigan State University. And we're a five-year program. And we were established in 2011 for the purposes of looking for and creating and developing innovative economic development strategies. So Ralph's work falls very much in line with um, what we're, we're um, looking for and our mission. So um, without any more time spent on technical um, issues, I think we've got ourselves ready to go. And so please welcome Ralph Wilhelms. Thanks, Ralph, for waiting. No problem, Jennifer. Thank you for the kind introduction. And uh, before we get started with the webinar, I just wanted to as well uh, share with the audience that um, this project received as well financial assistance and support from the United States Department of Commerce and the Economic Development Administration along, as you mentioned, the Michigan State University Center of Regional, Regional Economic Innovation. So thank you for that. Um, let me move on here. You see, this project really that we started here in the Upper Peninsula examined a rural regional cluster in terms of geographical setting rather than in terms of the common industrial category, uh, categorization. So uh, a website was really created with products from the Eastern UP uh, manufacturers and, um, and then uh, numerous uh, country specific marketing campaigns were launched to, uh, to or employed to um, market the site. So let's take a look at each of the components that we have here. So the first is the role of business clusters in rural economic development. You see, rural residents comprise about 20 percent of the American population with rural areas accounting for more than 80% of the total U.S. land mass. So production in these rural areas is no longer purely agricultural. Rather, it spans across almost all industries. So the U.S. government spent $40 billion on rural economic development just in 2007 alone. Much of that money was really, is, is now spent on uh, non-agricultural industries, as research shows that agricultural in, in, in improvements alone will not result in economic success. So rural areas are normally comprised of a variety of business types, 
uh, that are only loosely connected by by regions. So the clusters of these rural firms are located outside the region and often uh, hard to reach with the small independent efforts of each firm. After all, one rural firm on its own has very limited resources to add to an already disadvantaged location. And I mean, I wanted to refer to uh, Kinkum in 2011 really summed it up a little bit that business, the, the, the business conundrum really what he says is rural communities are too small to survive mistakes but also too small to support in-house the analytical capacity to avoid them. So when businesses join together, they can share resources, cut expenses, and therefore be more economically successful. And that's where business clusters come in. You see, business clusters were first popularized in Michael Potter's book, The Competitive Advantage of, of Nations. So the firms which make up business clusters are right, widely defined as being not only from the same geographical area, but also in the same industry. So business clusters such as we've seen in Silicon Valley or the big three automakers and, for example, the French uh, fashion houses are all good examples for firms located in the same industry and geographic location. So clusters have gained a renewed interest as a way to rebuild our devastated economy. In order to be successful, these firms must be dynamic and change according to a multitude of factors like new technology or disappearing natural resources or new customers demand. You see, as long as these firms are flexible and geared towards growth, they are able to reap economic rewards from shared resources. So business clusters come in all shapes and styles, but for the purpose of this project, we will focus on re, uh, rural regional clusters. Depending on what region of the United States it's being discussed, there are unique inputs offered only by that host area. So rural clusters may suffer both from a lack of homogeneous members and the te territory that they include. So the large distance that rural clusters stretch may be less of a disadvantage or not one at all with the uh, interconnectedness of the World Wide Web. So to their advantage, rural clusters involve a high degree, degree of trust and even uh, dissimilar industries and they can gain through the vast network of the internet. So successful clusters can positively impact entire region. So, but what we see too often in the literature, we find that geographically or geographic clusters are defined as being made up only of firms in the same industry. Now, I believe that rural development can be successful by thinking of business clusters in terms of geographic locations rather than fixating just on industrial categorization or categories. Now, let's take a look at the Eastern Upper Peninsula. You see, the study was centered in the Eastern Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So the area really comprised three counties. It's Chippewa, Lewis, and Mackinac County. 
And looking at the 2010 census in Michigan, uh, we're looking at a population of 56,000 people and a total ma land mass of about 3,500 square miles. So the eastern upper peninsula economically is heavily tourism based with the timber industry also being a large contributor. You see tourism dependency becomes a problem when summers are cold and and then um, or snowfall uh, is less than normal in the winter. So the the timber industry is fairly steady but shows little room for economic growth. Many of the region's largest employers are really population based such as hospitals, school systems and the local Indian tribes. So as population numbers continue to decline these fields will provide fewer jobs. So as people leave to find employment, the economy will be further weakened. You see, and that's where manufacturing comes in. Manufacturing provides a large potential or a source of income to the region. You see, since 2010, there were less than a dozen major manufacturers in this region which exported products. So now the task is to link these businesses together into a regional cluster that will be able to benefit member firms and ultimately the region. So this trial project detailed offers a potential framework in order to investigate creating regional clusters that are constrained only by geographic, geographically of the eastern upper peninsula. So let's take a closer look at the e-commerce, what we talked about that connects these uh, large rural regional areas. You see, electronic commerce is, is really the potential, it has an endless potential or marketplace. And e-commerce has changed the way in which customers make purchase decisions and companies sell their goods. You see, extensive marketing research has been conducted in terms of overall web experience, which essentially includes aiding the customers in their buying process from start to finish. Customers can today reach, find, and buy the product they desire in a matter of a couple clicks. The buyer is now more likely to type a desired product into the search and then qualify the company making the new market more product oriented. And that's a very important aspect today. You see, this will give small businesses with little to no brand recognition a chance in the marketplace. Research showed that small and medium-sized enterprises using web technology extensively are growing more quickly and exporting more widely. So the internet has also brought num numerous uh, advantages to business-to-business -business selling, including pro uh, productivity gain and an increased marketing audience. So business-to-business -business, uh, commerce include any intercompany transaction, more specifically 
e-commerce is the is sustainable and supported by computer data processing and internet communications. So today we're looking at about ninety billion dollars in sales to business to business marketplace. That's a tremendous number and three to four times larger than the business to consumer transactions. Now when we look at the project here, we done this project in three phases. The first phase was establishing a website as a central location to highlight the, uh, the products. This included gathering the necessary information for the website like pictures and materials specific from the businesses here in the area. The second phase of the project was that student teams coming up with advertising campaigns for, their spe for specific countries. Students chose their countries and marketing strategies independently and were only restrained by a marketing budget of between $250 to $500. Now Google Analytics was utilized in order to track website audience and traffic sources, which made up the third phase. Data provided in the study was tracked over the time period of um, six weeks. The companies, this study included eight small and medium-sized manufacturing companies, all of which are located in the eastern upper peninsula of Michigan. Due to the small size of the companies, they had little to no international exposure before this project. So by participating in the project, they demonstrated that they were interested in international uh, exporting. It is also important to note that this study allowed each company to represent itself. So the study coordinators did not act as sales intermediary, but rather lead generators and therefore the companies controlled their own sales process once provided with the sales lead. That's a very important aspect because when we first started to talk to the companies, we saw a lot of resistance in um, or the viewpoint that they felt like, oh, um, the students or the website becomes um, um, part of the company. And this really um, diffused that. So we really only facilitated a network of communication processes to connect international buyers with regional sellers. That was our goal. So, and what the other thing that we have to consider is there was no language adjustment made to the West website because the local uh, companies were not able to provide language support during the sales process. So therefore, the site targeted international customers that would uh, commonly know English. The website was set up as an international business to business exchange site and you see the picture here on the site. The site allowed for the potential buyers to search by industry, materials and products. So products were presented on the site, spanned across several different categories. Uh, product ca categories including machinery, automotive, medical engineer engineering, raw material, and some mining products as well. On, on the material, we used wood, plastic, metal, and composites where 
those were the choices or the four choices to search by material. Each product, as you see here on the bottom of the slide, each product included a picture and information about the product. The primary use, secondary use, and manufacturing processes for each product were really highlighted on the site as well. There was also a form available for visitors to contact the site coordinators about specific products they were looking for which were not offered on the site. The marketing strategy, students from an international marketing course at Lake Superior University identified potential markets based on personal knowledge, cultural backgrounds, and personal connections. So the countries were Brazil, Argentina, Russia, Germany, Turkey, England, and Canada. Now the final step in the process was to evaluate the options to facilitate and market the website to buyers in specific countries. The students looked at several different options and weighted the cost of advertising against the lead potential in order to identify the most effective marketing approach within a budget constraint um, environment. So, after deciding that a one-year membership, for example, to the German Chamber of Commerce would spend the entire budget, a team, for example, the German team, chose to use Google AdWords because they found it was more effective. Now, another example is the Canadian team opted to just focus on Facebook and word of mouth as their marketing vehicle because many of the members were from Canada, for example. Team Russia, for example, had originally researched an, an, a search engine in, in uh, Russia that is similar to AdWords, but they weren't approved by the Russian government to participate in it. So they then turned as well to Google AdWords and target some uh, target Moscow and St. Petersburg specifically to um, to target those geographic areas that target with their uh, AdWords. So, I mean, and so we had a number of approaches. We had a different approach in England, Turkey, Brazil. We used in Brazil some newspaper advertising that and it was an electronic newspaper as well, to drive traffic to the, to the site. And Google AdWords was the most commonly used strategy by the students to advertise the site. So when you look at it, five out of the seven groups used Google AdWords uh, as least as part of their marketing campaign. All right. Two groups which did not utilize AdWords relied on the social media Facebook as well. And one thing that came up, translation problems were a common theme with all the teams. See, during the course of the project, students would modify strategies by changing keywords, translating words, and, in, and that would increase the, the click amounts from that country. And then they then monitored the changes to ensure that they were in fact increasing traffic to the site. And again, we use Google Analytics to do so. And you see here, you see on the bottom, this is, these are all things, pictures from Google Analytics. So, we used Google Analytics to provide really statistical analytics for the page. Google provides this service at no cost and it provided the feedback really for 
the visitors to our website. At the time we did this, we had about, in the four weeks, we had about 4,618 visitors to the page, of which 4,282 were unique visitors. So these figures equate to about 92% of the visitors being new. There were a total of 7,307 page views with about 1.6 page views per visit. The average visit was about 36 seconds with a total bounce rate of about 78%. I mean, it is important to note that 27% of total visits were from mobile devices, including tablets, mobile. See, mobile visitors visited fewer pages and had higher bounce rates than the average visitors, meaning from a computer. So mobile users, stay, stay duration was about 33 seconds, which is slightly shorter than average visitors. We had almost 30 different countries visited the website. Traffic from Argentina made up almost 50% of all visitors to the site. Russia came in second with 13% of the visitors. Canada always uh, also posted double-digit traffic numbers to the site with a little over 10%. A shortener version of the result by country, you can, you can see here on the bottom right, it's, it's just a picture, it's not the end result, but those are, those are provided by Google Analytics. Now, when we look at the source of the traffic, there were really main, three main sources, traffic sources. The direct source were responsible for the smallest percentage of site visits, with 16. Search traffic made up 18% of the total. And then here was the interesting thing. Ask and Google. Ask was 47%, and Google provided 43%, and presenting the two largest contributors to the search traffic. So with that referral, we can say referral traffic was the largest contributor to our traffic source to the site. And, oops, I jumped here, sorry. And the last thing is, oh no, I can go over it. What we had is, we had four inquiries that we received of which two were moved, were passed on to the companies, and the other two were general inquiries about products. Now, this experimental project had really three objectives. The first goal was to introduce the Eastern uh, UP manufacturing firms to a wider audience. The second goal was to de demonstrate that regional clusters focusing on geographic rather than industries can be successful in rural development and, and business plan. The final objective was to create a framework on which to build future regional cluster exporting project on and provide improvement suggestions for those projects. So the first aim of generating awareness of the Eastern UP products and services was clearly achieved by looking at the data. There were about 4,282 unique visitors to the site in the, two, in the time period of about four to six weeks. By looking at the per country data, we see that 90% of the traffic came from 
international sources. The fact that visitors from Argentina accounted for just under half of all the visitors demonstrated that the marketing campaign for that country was very successful. The other marketing campaigns were still successful with visits, uh, visits from Russia and Canada also contributing 13 and 10 percent respectively. Before the project, the participating firms had little to no international exposure and this project was able to create increase their international audience. Now the project showed limited success in terms of inquiries versus visitors based solely on geographic geography rather than by industry type. So out of these thousands of visits, four unique inquiries were received, further weakening the result in this, uh, in this, um, for this goal was the fact that out of the four leads, only half of them were potential business transactions. See, I believe that the limited success in the area was mainly attributed to the really short time frame or span of the project. In future projects, a longer run would more adequately determine if this idea could be successful. Finally, this project was successful at providing a framework for a future regional cluster project. Since regional firms have limited budgets, it is important to use resources as efficiently as possible. The results show that even with limited budgets, well thought out marketing approaches can be successful. Also highlighted in the study was the utilization of the business to business marketing approach as a means to navigate language and budget restrictions. So the project also demonstrates the need for further develop the site and include additional products and services to increase the relevance really of the site for foreign buyers. Remember, we, we did a little bit the shotgun approach here. So increases in both time and budget were also wanted for this free future project. Now, the approach showed efficiency of resources and know-how to highlight the Eastern UP manufacturing products in foreign markets as shown in the unique visitors. Ultimately, the time limitations um, created a challenge for the project. So what you have to keep in mind is the time limitation and the, the limited products that were displayed on the site uh, provided a challenge for this project. And I believe that the limitation reflect the academic setting in which this experiment was really conducted. It's also believed that uh, even taking into account these limitations, this, this project was still able to provide a solid foundation for future research on regional business clusters based on geographic clusters. And really what, what we have to look is, is we have to look at it as well from a strategic point of view and maybe include larger regions and therefore increase the number of product offerings on the web website which, which 
would then expect increases in lead generations because that's really what we want to do with the website. We want to generate leads for the companies for them then to move forward into exporting. And that was our project here in the Eastern UP. Are there any questions at this time? Ralph, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, I don't know if the participants have questions or not, but um, please feel welcome to type into your question box or your chat box, um, and then Ralph will take them as they as they come. Do we have any questions or comments in the room? We have a few participants here in the room also. Oh, I see. So, so Ralph, uh, yes. this is uh, John Melcher. What, what do you think is the potential on this website and, and for the businesses uh, up in the Eastern UP? And just thinking in the sort of next uh, phase for this. What I, I honestly believe that um, we need to further develop this. We need to get out there. But before we now focus on the marketing aspect, we have to increase the number of products that are displayed on there. And I feel that uh, it would be helpful for not only the Eastern UP, but the whole region or the Upper Peninsula as a whole to include the products in there. Because what you do now is, as more products you, you display on the website, and then drive traffic to it, it becomes more relevant for the visitors. And what really is the difference here, and, and, and you can really spin the wheel because what you see today as well within the United States, there's a competition between states. You see, we could create a knowledge depository of these, of companies' inventory, even statewide if you wanted to do this. But what became clear within the study is that in the business-to-business -business section as well, we see a change in the paradigm of people not anymore associating companies with each other, but rather than looking for specific products and then checking out the companies. Ralph, um, I yeah. don't know if I missed this. This is Jennifer. Um, yes. You were saying saying that to keep this sustainable, um, you're using. I noticed. You, well, I remember you saying you're using the Google Ad Words, right? Is that what it's called? Yes. So to keep you it see. sustaining, is, would this mean that new products or services that are added by the companies would they be charged then the fee? Is that how it would work, that they would pay? Because I know that... You know what? Here's, there are two ways to go about it. You can either do it on a subscription basis to create a sustainable environment, or you... And, and it really depends on the setting of it. Because if, if a non-profit organization wants to sustain it, they maybe could go with lead generation as well. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Whenever a transaction takes place, they are then will benefit. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very impressed with the number of unique visitors. I think John Melcher and I, our jaws dropped because that's very impressive. I, I, I'm kind of curious. I don't know if you have a slide that shows what some of the Google AdWords, you know, the ads look like. You know what, it's, it's actually was kind of interesting because, and, and some of the approaches was as well limited because of the, of the funds available. Because what we wanted to do is we, we had like seven countries and then we spread out the money among the, the students and then Google AdWords came as most efficient, but for example, the Germans had an interesting one where they were working with, um, 
the embassy here to get like email blasts out to German companies and they had like 6,000 of them on a list. So we weren't able to really take advantage of those kind of approaches because we were like limited there. But it was kind of interesting. I mean, students were really tuned in on a daily basis on changing their ad words and remember it's all English so it was very limited. That was my next comment was how do we streamline that or make that more efficient for the future is how, how do you do that translation? Yes, I mean it was actually pretty neat to see because this was a business to business approach which there's only limited research that is done on it. So we, we really wanted to, the students as well to, to freewheel on this one and see what kind of ideas they came up with. Yeah. And we're still um, reviewing the data of the words, which kind of words they use, because that's again, this is a, that would be a know-how or a knowledge depository where you say, okay, if this works in Germany, this word, that's because it's English, does it work in Argentina as well? Very interesting. We need uh, the business anthropology program down in Wayne State to maybe to look at that. Can you hear me? Yeah, just barely. Okay. That's why I have to lean like forward. The program at Wayne State, actually I don't know if it's still, I'm sure it's still around, but it, it's an anthropology or an anthropological look at businesses and how you market phones or, you know, any product, really cars or anything in another country. Right. right? Um, yeah, it would be kind of interesting, not only that, but if that works, that would maybe at, as well, I mean, you can draw a multitude of conclusions based on that. Yeah. I noticed you have some questions. You're probably seeing those. Yes, I saw Ellie Thompson had one. Do you want to go ahead and read the question? Yes. Were there any export regulations that companies had to consider qualify in order to participate in the website? Ali, no. There were no limitations because the way we looked at it was why would we want to limit ourselves at the beginning? Because it's almost like you say, oh, if I get an order from Russia, then I can't do this. So we limit ourselves or create biases right at the start. We felt like, okay, once we get a lead, let's qualify this then and then look at that. That was really our approach with it. Does that answer your question, Al? Ken, oh, let me, let me read out Ken's question. Where you're able to track the numbers of visitors that uh, desired further exploration of the firms and their products. Can I think that will show over time. And that's why it's very difficult to really put a an, an, uh, return on investment on this as well. Because we spend funds for marketing the website. The students had this fund available. You see, in business to business, it's maybe one lead that can provide you with a hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, a million dollars order. So it's a little bit different than business to consumer and the ratios are different and the selling process is longer in business to business. So we don't have any data right now on the success return regarding how much money it generated or ultimately we are, we are talking here in Michigan all the time it's like how many jobs are generated or how many companies we save. But one thing we can say for sure is that more than 4,000 people around the world looked at the Eastern UP website. Mm -hmm. And you said you had two leads out of the four that... Yes, yes, and again, you see, this is where I think this, this program needs further development because now passing on the leads to the company, we now need to follow up with them and say, okay, did something was was something generated because of this or not? Great. Good question. Hi, this is Charisma. Um, so I was wondering, are, like you're talking about further expansion, are you planning on including other countries in the future? 
future? You, you see, here's, here's, I think, the, the various steps of this one. I think the next step in this process should be to increase the number of products. Okay. So, include more counties, include more companies. I mean, I don't care what product it is, just put it on there because the buyer eventually will decide what he's interested in. The, the, the second thing is, the company has nothing to lose because their, their name is not attached to the product. But if they identify the product, then we go in. Now, regarding other countries, yes. I think you need to expand it now to other countries as well. And I think some of the limitations were as well, or some of from the discussions with the students, and again, we didn't want to direct the students, we wanted to more get their input into how they viewed it, but some of them looked at China as well, or India, but felt like it's so large that they can't penetrate. Or for the time period we had it, it was difficult to do that. Like, for example, the Russian one, where to get into the search engine, where they denied the request. And now, once they denied the request, if you now think about a longer time period, you maybe now wanted to follow up with them and say, okay, here's what we're really trying to do. Yes, to give you an answer for your question, yes, we wanted to expand in more countries and but the first step needs to be, let's increase the number of products as well on the site. And to be honest, it doesn't really need to be Eastern UP. This, this whole idea was, was, really, was really created due to the disadvantages we really have in economic development up here. But I truly believe that this is a valuable approach to not only us, I mean to the, all of the Eastern UP or the rest of Michigan for that matter. We'll use throughout the state, definitely. Thank you. Okay, any more questions in the chat box? I don't know if I see any. Thank you for the question, Ken. I appreciate it. And Ali, too. Okay. Um, Ralph, I don't think there are any more questions. And okay. Yeah. Um, we have a, a short poll, and this is the first time we've used Adobe, or I'm sorry, GoToWebinar. In the past, we've used Adobe Connect. So we're going to try this poll, and I'm sorry to do this to everybody, but I just, I, we want to Try it and see if it works. It, you should see on your screen. So we thought we'd try it with all of our webinars. Um, we do have a, a couple of other webinars that are coming up, and we'll be promoting those on July 3rd and July 11th. Um, the July 3rd is on skills gap versus skills training um, with Carolyn Hatch, visiting scholar um, from Canada. And then on July 11th, we will be hosting uh, <laughs> Makerspaces with Christina Benton, and she will be um, joined by two of her colleagues from uh, East Lansing, from the city of East Lansing. But um, I just wanted to alert you of those, and hopefully you'll receive the, the network message, and if you're not on the REI network, please join. Um, I think, I, I'm not sure if I've connected with some of these participants. I know there's a few of them on the network. You can join through our REI website. That's www.reicenter.org. It's very easy, um, and you just fill out the form, and we will send you alerts on th this type of webinar. But uh, thank you very much, Dr. Wilhelms. This was a really great presentation. I think that we need to get the word out more about this website. Um, I think that this could be applied, I think we were saying, all over the state or, or in other regions or areas. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Yeah. Thank you. So we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Oh, and this webinar has been recorded, so it will be uploaded onto the website, um, okay. and it will be transcribed, ADA compliant, so for the visual or hearing impaired. And uh, be, be on the lookout for uh, Dr. Wilhelm's full report. Um, his student team worked very hard, and there's more information within the report than I think that was mentioned here in, during the webinar.
Good. So thank you everybody for participating and thank you Dr. Wilhelms. Thank you very much Jennifer and when you get the opportunity shoot me over the link for the archive I would like to take a look at it. Yes sure in fact that is what I'll probably do is send it out I will I'll definitely send it out to all of the attendees and that way you can watch again or share with your colleagues or um, others in your region that are thinking about something like this. Okay good. Okay we'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Talk okay. to you then. All right. Bye -bye. Have a nice day. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks.